Would everyone now please give a very warm welcome to George Janais. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I have to deliver on my promise. The promise was that I would teach you all how to be able to cook for 50 people in 50 minutes, right? It's like snake oil, right? No, it's actually very doable. And that's what I'm going to show you today. I'm going to talk a little bit about my book, talk a little bit about my YouTube channel and what brought me here today. Um, the opening line in my book is five minutes to closing is the most devastating time of the day for anybody, especially a restaurant that's open for breakfast, lunch and dinner. I am the son of a man who created a landmark restaurant by accident in the middle of nowhere. And that's basically what happened. By the way, oven, refrigerator. So this would be the oven right now, and we've taken some preparations, and they're warming up in the oven right now. So that's why I'm just trying to give you an idea. We want to do this 50-minute thing, right? So things are warming up in the oven as we speak. Anyway, my father was a pl uh, waiter at the Plaza Hotel. He was also a painter, and he was also uh, he worked at a donut shop. He worked in crazy hours and his dream was to go back to Greece so he sent all his money back to Greece and his his brother built this beautiful house and a movie theater and the movie theater exploded it was a time where cinema was at its peak and my father was excited and I remember in the basement of our apartment building in Astoria my grandfather had boxes and boxes and, and trunks of, of tablecloths and linens and everything that they were gonna ship up to Greece and about three months before my father, uh, which was be basically penniless at this point, had everything to go, had already packed everything up to go to Greece, um, they, 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 they told him that the theater wasn't doing so good, television came out and business was really dropping and there was no way that it could really sustain him. So he knew that he had to make a dra dramatic change in his life. And it was at that point that my mother's first cousin, Gus Hartefellis, approached, he, has a, he had a bad heart, so he needed an employee. And he told, he asked if, he, if my mother knew anybody who'd be interested in partnering in the Hellenic, oh, Brown's Cabins, which was there for 150 years. Brown's Cabins and Snack Bar. So my father goes, I'll do it, with no money whatsoever. He jumped in, and my, my uh, mother's cousin, Gus, was a realtor. And he said, you know, we're just going to knock down the snack bar. He goes, no, 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 we're not, we're not knocking it down. He goes, oh, we, people are going to be staying in the cabins. We've got to feed them. He goes, look, you, you take care of the cabins. I'll do the manual labor. I'll take care of the snack bar. Gus missed that part. I never mentioned this in the book because I only found out about this two years ago. There was an actual bulldozer headed towards the snack bar. And it literally, my father stopped it from plowing down the snack bar. Now the, ca the cabins are gone, which is <laughs> ironic. The snack bar still exists. That's where I basically, my, my life, my memories uh, pretty much started, which was in 1976. By 1980, I was working full time at the restaurant as a dishwasher in the summers, 10 years old. By the age of 12, I used to be the guy who used to cut up all the skewers. Uh, the pork would come in and they'd have to get deboned and cut. And I was doing that with my dad till two o'clock in the morning, every Wednesday morning. And, Anyway, by the age of 16, I was a full-time chef at the restaurant. I went to college. I became an electrical engineer. I graduated in 1992. In 1991, we had given political asylum to the Middle East. And we had this giant tank in the economy in the engineering sector. So it was either start a career as an engineer for $36,000 a year or work at the restaurant and have two months off a year. <laughs> so I started working in the restaurant. 1992, I met my beautiful bride, Maria. In 1995, we opened up our own Hellenic in Hampton Bay. Does anybody remember that? That was only, it was short-lived. It was only three years. My, my father was, at the time, when I had opened up my own Hellenic, he was 60. And when I, and I, by, by three years later, we had the, the, my landlord in the Hampton Bay's was ill. And he said, you got to buy the place or get out because I'm not interested in being a landlord anymore. So we said, I go to Maria, let's, let's run both places. And that, did, <laughs> that was done in like a month. We were like, forget this. That's not happening. So we abandoned that restaurant. I came back and I started working and took over my father's restaurant in 1998 and started making some dramatic changes. And it was this constant battle between the two of us. It was, it was tough because, you know, he's old school. We, we never change the recipes. The recipes are the same. We've added. Um, and now it is a three... 250 seat restaurant we do full-blown caterings on and off premise um, it's a different kind of a beast but we're always there I mean it's still family run still same family owned and that's the history of the restaurant when I came back to the Hellenic it and I had just come back from the Hamptons I had been introduced to an entire new clientele 
and they were the people that were migrating over to the North Fork. The whole region had changed. It was wine country now. And it wasn't a little tiny family town, and Greenport was the heart of the town, which was kind of shoddy. It was a ship, you know, fisherman's town. That wasn't happening anymore. Everything was starting to become upscale. And I come into the snack, my father's restaurant, and he's happy with these plastic tablecloths that have, you know, picnic, picnic uh, uh, hatches on them. And, uh, and the, you know, everything just looked really, I was like, man, this, this would totally not fly in the Hamptons. So I had to make some dramatic changes to the restaurant. And, I've been, and, and I, one thing I started realizing is my father was starting to become s uh, moved by salespeople. Like this one guy brings in this stuff called Sea Leg Supreme. You guys ever hear about this stuff? It's the it's the crab meat that they sell. It's like a stick. It's not really crab meat. It's right, and he, you know all you got to do is add mayo to this stuff, right? And and then you know he's using this uh, Nor chicken base, which I know you could, you've seen in the supermarket. And I'm seeing all these things. Like all of a sudden, it's like it's not the olive oil and the typical Greek stuff. And and all of a sudden, our chicken is no longer chicken. It's chicken with antibiotics and chicken with uh, you know, with hormones and, and everything's changing. And I took a step back and I said, I don't, I, I, I wasn't raised this way. I, I, I don't want to eat this way anymore. So I started to slowly bring it back to what it was. And it was too expensive to get it back to what it was. We're not a high, uh, you know, an upper scale restaurant where we could charge $30, $40 an entree. So moving backwards was really, really challenging. And then I realized quickly as I started hanging out with my friends that they're eating this way. And they're not really reading the labels, you know. And they, you know, friend, my, like, my friends like, "Oh, try this; it's really good." And I look at the ingredients, and they're toxic. I mean, they're really bad for you. So uh, one, one example is I started making my own gelato, and uh, I make it from scratch. Uh, I talked to my instructor who made the gelato, and it, uh, he was showing us how to do it. It was a three-day course. It was very intense. It's, it's literally a 300-page manual to make gelato. I'm not kidding. It's a huge. It's a lot of work. It's 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 intense. And I, and I tasted this gelato, and I wasn't impressed. And I said to him, I go, is this your base? Because you start with a base. And he goes, no, my base is uh, top secret. I make it 13 years. <laughs> and I said, wow. I go, because I want to make it from scratch with eggs, milk, cream. He goes, nobody uses eggs anymore. So I looked at him. I go, that's how I'm going to do it. So I made my own gelato. And the, all these salespeople started coming by. He's like, you got to try this base. It's the best base in the world. Mostly Italian, so they have Italian. You have to try these the best. So, I, you know, he's dropping off all these samples, and I'm looking, and one of the ingredients in the base was propane. Oh. How do you do that? How do you put propane in a powdered form? I couldn't believe it. Then I said to my wife, I said, you know what? I got to start this, this YouTube channel. And she's like, when are you going to have time for a YouTube channel? I, I know, but I, people need to know how to eat healthy. They got to. It never really amounted to anything. One day I'm at Costco, and I pick up a bag of flour you know, 50 pound bag of flour. And I drop it in the cart and I look at the bag and at the bottom of the bag, it says, do not handle with bare hands. <laughs> Wash all surfaces after use. Do not eat raw dough, the blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, this is flour. I go, that's it, I'm done. I'm making this channel. I started videotape. I knew I wouldn't be able to film in the summer. My goal is to release a video a week. And I have been doing so since, ch since the inception of the channel. And in order to do that, I filmed while the restaurant was closed. I did like 17 episodes, knowing that that's what I would need to get through the summer. The food that I'm going to make for 50 today is actually a basket. And I've been making this basket for an extremely long time. I used to make them for Chrysalis Art Gallery. I don't know, they were in Southampton. Every time they would promote their, an artist, they would get the baskets from me. I actually did uh, Alec Baldwin and Kim Basinger. That's a while ago. Um, <laughs> I did there. She had a breast cancer fundraiser. I made the baskets for that. I cater. I make these baskets. They're not hard to make. It's just a matter of reaching into your inner core and making it from your heart. What my Warehouse Chef channel is, is all about taking advantage of buying food that's organic in bulk. And how do you cook with it so you don't waste it? Because if you buy it in bulk, it drops the price to the point where you can afford it. And, but then you're going to throw it out if you don't have a lot of people. So that's what the channel's all about. The balance of buying in bulk and using it. Cooking for the whole week in a couple hours so you can enjoy food all, all week. And, and getting back into the kitchen, not being afraid to cook. Not being afraid to cook for a large volume of people. And this basket today will feed everyone here. It really is limited by the size of your oven. 
So if you have a smaller oven, it's going to take a little bit longer than 50 minutes. But the food is pre-made for the most part. That's how you do it in 50 minutes. But the food that I've chosen is organic. They sell beautiful morsels of food that are already organic. All you have to do is heat them up. So that's the foundation. But I wanted you to taste some of my food from the restaurant. So I made some. St I brought some stuff from Hellenic, and I bought some stuff from Costco. So you get the general idea of how it works. So here we go. The foundation for this is a basket. So you go to Pottery Barn or one of those places and you pick up one of these baskets. Make sure that it's shallow. You want it to be fairly shallow. You take a tablecloth and you put your hand in the center of the tablecloth, somewhere in the center, like that, like a ghost. You pinch it, you make sure that all the ends are in the basket and you just drop it down and then you fold out. You don't want the ends coming out of the side of the basket. So you just want them to kind of fluff out like that. Then you get kale. This is colorful kale because it's in season. And you want to cover all of the tablecloths. So you just go around with the kale and you basically cover the whole basket like this. And this becomes your foundation. I used to make these baskets all the time and anything that I put on the basket that wasn't edible never came back so <laughs> you know that gets to be quite expensive I try to keep on the basket just things that are edible that I don't care if they ever come back one of the surprise benefits of that was that I didn't have to clean anything afterwards <laughs> try to get creative with what you put on it so you don't have to be cleaning after you're done Basically, I'm just going round and round in circles in this basket, leaving, putting the kale leaves face up. And as you do this, you see that the basket is already building up to almost like a floral bouquet, right? So it's already pretty. And then I just push it down like that because I'm want to. i going to be putting weight on it. I don't want things toppling over. That's your foundation. What was that, like two minutes, three minutes? Okay. You grab a head of cabbage, like a nice purple cabbage. And you find a spot where it won't topple over. So that's going to be the spot. I went to Costco, I bought these chicken skewers that are pre-skewered, and I also bought these sausages, this is a company called Adele's, they're all natural chicken apple sausages. So I put those on skewers with a pepper, put those in the oven at 350 degrees. Now you take your skewers, and when you put them on the skewer, don't go too high up, you want them to kind of be close to the bottom a little bit, and just stab it into the... The reason why this is interesting is because you could easily put these on plates and lay them out and you'd have this, but you won't have the same effect. Remember, the whole visual thing is important. The most important thing is to follow the contour of the head. It almost looks like um, there was a horror movie called Hellraiser back in the 80s or something. So, it <laughs> remember that? <laughs> Am I the only one who remembers that? <laughs> There's about a hundred uh, or so skewers here, or 75 or so skewers. <coughs> they fill up the cabbage really, really nicely, and when it's all said and done, it's gonna look like a big blossoming flower. I didn't cook anything here. All I did was chop up some peppers, and if you don't have time to chop up the peppers, don't. Just put the sausage. You can do meatballs, you can do mozzarella balls, you can do anything, whatever your heart, just get creative. Don't be afraid. So it really is all in the delivery. And this is a really great presentation. Look, now I'm out of room. You have tons of room, just keep going. You know, if you have a, a friend or a child, they would have fun doing this, right? Just tell them to follow the contour of the, of the cabbage. So you can do falafel, right? They, make them, they, have, they have these cauliflower bites. You can put that on there. Don't, just read the ingredients, right? So here, what do you need to avoid? This is my personal, the things I avoid, right? No soybean oil. I get rid of that. I, and canola is a horrible oil for you. It's a terrible oil. So now you have your beautiful cabbage leaves, right? There's your bowls. Put three or four together like this. I'm going to put this here. And I'm going to fill it with yogurt sauce, which I make at the restaurant. They sell this at Costco. Not mine, but they sell it at Costco. It's not like my yogurt sauce. So, And I wanted you to try it. Take that. Put it in there. There's your dipping bowl, ready to go. Try to get it on the kale, and there you go. I told you, no plates, we don't want to be cleaning, right? This is naan, 
right? This becomes your foundation right here. So you take the non, I'm gonna put that right there. That'll be my non spot. This, this whole thing here is about abundance. You're trying to make everything look overflowing and natural, right? Even though my hummus is better, I wanted to show you <laughs> that you can get hummus from Costco and it's organic. You put a big dollop of hummus in the center like that, okay? That's where you start. These are organic pita chips and these are gluten-free. So I'm gonna put one on one side, one on the other. For those of you who are gluten-free, just don't eat the pita chips. I mean, if you're celiac, it's, you know, they're close to each other, I'll try to keep them separate. So this is gonna be a hummus flour. You just take it and stab it all the way around. Now in my restaurant, when I make these platters, I do this with pita, pita triangles. So you can purchase naan from Costco, cut it up into triangles, you toast it in the oven. But I was trying to make this simple. And as you start to fill these layers all around, people are gonna just take it out and eat it. And pluck it right out of there. So as you build the layers, add more hummus. Right? I throw some carrots in there. So I'm curious to see by the end of this platter how full you are. And we have about, what, 40 people here? So you just keep going, just keep dolloping on there. So when you get to the top, you just kind of fill it in like that. And it really does work a little bit better with pita triangles, but that's that. That finishes that. Now we're going to fill in the rest of the voids, right? And put the spoon over here on the side. And let's see what else other goodies I have here. Okay, so these were organic pot stickers. I figured we go a little Asian, stay away from the Greek a little bit. We're going to be building into it, right? So you start on the outside with the most and you work your way inside with the least. So start with the outside and don't worry about the layers, right? Because as people start picking away at this food, it'll reveal more and more, which is kind of cool. It just has to be appealing to your eye. To me, it needs more here and here, needs more here. I'm not an artist by any stretch of the imagination. I'm actually terrible at it. And I'll save some. I'll add some a little bit later. I made these spectacular meatballs. They're the Grecian burger, but in the meatball form. So they do sell these at Costco, but I wanted you to try some of my food. This is where I want them to be, my own personal pleasure. It's my own personal preference. And it'll be yours too. <laughs> Whatever you want, just do it your way. Just think abundance and layers. And if you plan on moving this thing, remember that you may have to move it and you'll have meatballs rolling all over your kitchen. So <laughs> let's say you want to do something different. Let's say you want to do a little cheese. So again, you make yourself a little cabbage leaf bowl. Try to find something that's got a, a spine, right? If it's wimpy like this, you don't really want to use it. So you find this, the spine of the cabbage and you basically create a bowl just like this. Put these right in the middle. That's where I'm going to put them. That's where I want to put them. I took these uh, little mozzarella balls from Costco. I added, I, I, I kind of like mint better with them than basil, just a personal preference. And then I took balsamic glaze that's gluten free, so you can have that. Um, you can't have these meatballs, I'm sorry about that. So, and then I just, I'm going to just dump them right there. There you go, there's my mozzarella balls, finished. Let's see, the last thing I got are my spinach rolls and I have these quiches which I've never even tasted but they looked interesting. So maybe I'll put those in there too. But first I'll start with my spinach rolls because I want them on there because I want you to have that. Same kind of a concept here. I'm not really trying to do anything too difficult here, but there is a, there is, there is a little method to this madness. There's symmetry. Just keep it flow. Like look at nature. Like things in nature are symmetrical, but they're not really symmetrical. So keep that in mind when you're doing this. And if you want people to enjoy the food, think abundance. These, I don't make these. These come from Greece, but they're so good that I have them on my menu. They're really excellent. Yeah, they do. They're made in Greece. Yeah. Okay. So let me put this away just for a second. And I'm going to try putting some of these quiches out. Just cutting them in quarters, stacking them where I want them to be, where I think they look good. But they, they, you know, I read the ingredients, the ingredients were good. These are all from Costco, yep. 
Look, I'm not trying to make Costco anything richer than what they are, <laughs> but quality's good. Okay, so I'm starting to run out of space. I need to stack more spinach rolls over here. Grab them from there. Go this route. All I'm doing is filling in the voids in a way that's pleasing to my eye, making sure that there's a certain level of symmetry. That's it. More dumplings over here. See how I just keep going? Like it's crazy, right? Like how much more can you put on this thing? You just keep stacking it. You, every, everything you put on here, will, there will be a layer revealed, which is kind of neat. I'm sorry? How heavy is it? Oh, this, this, this weighs a solid 10, 15 pounds. Easy. I know I'm not moving this, right? <laughs> so now here is the last thing that you got to do. This is a pack of 100 skewers. Um, you take the lemon and you cut the non-pointy part off. So this would be the pointy part, if you can envision that. You want to cut it off so that the round is gone. So you know what I mean? So it's like it gives you more surface area. Then you take your, your skewers. I shouldn't even be telling you guys. This is a trade secret here. It's a big trade secret. You put them on the table like this, take the lemon, stick it onto the skewer like this and twist it and it'll open up. Now there's lemon flavor on the skewer. It actually makes the appetizer taste better. And you find a spot where you want it and just stick it in there because that's how your guests are gonna get the food. And that's it. Now, I know that that, that was with the preparation time. I think it took, I'm looking at the camera, it's 20 minutes there. With what, the 20 minutes or 25 minutes? And there you have it, right? I mean, not, maybe not quite what you expected. You probably weren't thinking, oh, wow, he's going to actually cook a meal for 50. It is a meal for 50. And, and I want you to all enjoy it. So I don't know if we, why don't you step up now and have some, and then we can sit down and talk a little bit more about the book. And uh, I'm going to move this. This is going to be fun. There you go. Okay.